In this video, we'll be going over a word search. So given n times n board and a word, find if the word exists in the grid. The word can be constructed from letters of sequentially adjacent cells, where adjacent cells are horizontally or vertically neighboring. The same cells may not be used more than once. So in our first example, we're, we're giving a board and we're trying to find the word A, B, C, C, E, D. And we can find it here. And then we can return true after we find it. Or after we find the word, let's go over the dot process. For each of the cell at RC, we will want to implement a recursive backtracking approach to find the word. We will need to keep track of our current index, i inside word. This will allow us to compare the current cell with the current character. Then in each of the recursive call, we are allowed to go in four different directions, which is up, down, left, right. But we should note that we are not allowed to use the same cell twice. This means we will need to mark pre previously seen cells. This can be done by placing a a character pound at the cell. Now, if we have failed to find the word inside a path, we will want to backtrack our steps. This can be done by placing the original character C back into the cell, back into the cell, and then take a different path. Take a different path to find the word. Let, let's go over the pseudocode. So we're going to iterate through the rows and columns of board, which we're going to denote as RC. Then we're going to implement the recursive backtracking approach, starting from this cell. And then we ask ourselves, what parameters do we need? We first need R, the current row, C, the current column, and for the input board. And then we have word, the input word, and I, our current index inside word. We can move this upward. Now, what is the base case? Then if R, if RC is out of bound, or actually before that, if I is out of bound, if I is out of bound, this means we have found all of the characters, then we can return true. Then if RC is out of bound, or the current character inside board RC is not equal to the character, at index i inside word, this means we have failed to find a path, then we can return false. Then in each of the recursive call, we want to save the current character. So we're going to create a variable, ch, and save it to, and set it to board rc. Now we want to mark this, now we want to mark the current cell as visited. So I'm going to set board RC to a pound character. Oh, this one more thing. Um, so if RC is out of bound or the current is not equal to, oh, this is fine. Then we don't need it because pound would not equal to any of the characters. So it will eventually return from the recursive call or it will just return false. So it'll be fine. So we're going to iterate through the four directions. We're going to denote it as D. Then we're going to implement a recursive uh, and then we're going to recursively find the rest of the characters and then r is going to be r incremented by the current directions row and c is going to be incremented by the current directions column and then we have to move our pointer forward our character forward to i plus one then if the recursive call is true then we can return true 
Else, if we have failed to find a path, well, we're going to backtrack our steps. So we're going to set board RC back to his original character to CH, and then we can return false. Now let's go over the time and space complexity. So the time complexity is all of n times 3 to the n, or 3 to the k, where n is the total number of cells, and k is the length of the word. This is because for each of the cells, we implemented a recursive backtracking approach. Oh, right, just one more thing. It's not yet. So after after if if we have felt or if, if we have found a path starting from RC, we can return true. Then we can say if the recursive call is true, then we can return true. Else if we after we have checked all of the cells and we still have failed to find a path, then we can return false. Okay, now, now let's get back here. So for each of the cells, we implemented a recursive backtracking approach. Then each recursive call has up to three choices and a depth of k. We, we have three choices because we have marked previously seen cells. So although we're iterating through four directions, we're actually just going down three paths because the pre one of the paths it has already been seen before. So the space complexity is O of k, where k is the length of the word. This is because of the recursive call stack memory. Let's go over the code. So we're going to iterate through all of the cells, all the rows and columns. And then we're going to iterate through all the columns. Then if exists, we check if the word exists starting from the current cell. If the word exists, you can return true. After we have checked all the cells, you can return false if we have failed to find the word. And then we're going to implement our recursive backtracking approach. Then if i is out of bound, this means we have found all the characters, we can return true. Then if, if the current cells, if RC is out of bound, or the current character at board RC is not equal to the character at index i, and you can return false. Now we want to save the current character because we want to mark the current cell as visited. Then we can say board RC is equal to pound, mark it as visited. Now we can iterate through the four different directions. Then we can implement a, and then we can recursively find the rest of the characters. If we have found if we have found the rest of the characters, we can return true. Else, we want to backtrack our steps, so we want to replace we want to place the original character back into the cell, and then we can return false. Now we have to create our directions array, which will allow us to move in the four different directions. This one is upward, this one is downward. Now we want, this one is, wait, no, this one is leftward because we're going, we're, our column is getting decremented by ones. So we're leftward and I, uh, at one here is going rightward and negative one for the row, that means we're going upward. And then the last one is going downward. directions because d0 is for row and d1 is for columns.
Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below.